Okay, this is the notes for section 6.5 properties of kites. If you haven't done so already, stop the video at this time and read section 6.5 before continuing on with the video. So before we kind of get into this, we're, this, this, is all, this, this whole section is about kites. And we, we've got to remember what the definition of a kite is. It's a kite is a quadrilateral that has two pair of consecutive sides that are congruent to each other. Okay, so the big idea here is that kites include rhombuses and rhombuses include squares. So all the properties that we look at for kites will also apply to rhombuses and squares. Okay, so as I look at this particular kite, D and B would be the ends because they're the 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 vertex points that are between the congruent sides, the sides that are congruent to each other. Okay, so let's take a look at the reflection symmetry that a kite possesses. First of all, we have the kite symmetry theorem that just says the line containing the ends of a kite is the symmetry line for the kite. Okay, so going with that idea, the line that I have drawn in on the, in the kite above, that line DB, that line would be the symmetry line for that kite. Okay, the symmetry diagonal would be the diagonal contained within that symmetry line. So it, the diagonal, remember, is a line segment. So when I look at the symmetry diagonal, it would be uh, the, the, the line segment with, with endpoints at the ends of the kite. So DB, that line segment, would represent the symmetry diagonal. Okay? And then finally, we have the kite diagonal theorem. And that just says the symmetry line of a kite is the perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal and bisects the two angles at the ends of the kite. So what that's telling us then is that this, if I look at this picture down here, that if, if I take a look at, if it's the perpendicular bisector, I know that this is going to be a 90 degree angle. I know that this length and this length would have to be exactly the same. So if this point is the point x right here, then I can say ax, that line segment is congruent to um, cx, or I can say ax is equal to cx, those distances. Okay, um, we know that, that that we have a right angle there. That does not that is not something that goes both ways though. Okay, so the the symmetry diagonal by is the perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal, but the other diagonal is not the perpendicular bisector of the symmetry diagonal. Okay, let's take a look at example one here. It says given kite G G E O M with ends at G and O, uh, if TE is 6 and TGE is 48, the measure angle EOM is 70, find as many other angle measures as you can. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to use the information we know to, to find as many measurements as possible. Okay, and to do that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark uh, my, my my kite the way that uh, with the things that I know. So I know that TE is 6. I know that angle EOM is 70. Um, I also know that right here that if if these are the ends, if G and O are the ends, I know this and this are equal in length and I also know this is equal in length to this. But I don't know anything about what those lengths are. But I do know that they have to be equal. Now that also tells me that GO must be the symmetry diagonal of this kite. So if this is 48, then this would have to be 48. And if this is 70, I know that that has to be the angle bisector of that, so this would have to be 35 degrees, as with this right here. Okay, And we know that it, it's going to be the perpendicular bisector of this other diagonal, therefore if this is 6, this right here would have to be 6. So from the information that we know, is write that out um, in this way. So 
So let's take the take a look at the symmetry of rhombuses then, and we're going to do that using the rhombus diagonal theorem. And what the rhombus diagonal theorem says is each diagonal of a rhombus is the symmetry line of the rhombus and a perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal. So um, if 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 we were to take and draw in the diagonals, if I draw in the diagonal from M to R and also draw in the diagonal from K to A, I know that those two diagonals have to be symmetry lines. So if I if I were to reflect them over those those lines that they would they would reflect on the, the, the rhombus would reflect onto itself. And I also know that they're perpendicular bisectors of each other. So that means that this would evenly be divided. This would evenly be divided. And I know that this would be a 90 degree angle. Okay? So if if this is a point, we'll call that point X, I know that KX would be equal to AX. I know that MX would be equal to Rx. And I know that MA, MR, excuse me, is perpendicular to uh, KA. All of that, and I know that those diagonals are um, are also symmetry diagonals for that rhombus. Let's take a look at example two here. It says draw rhombus plum with diagonals intersecting at point B. If the measure of angle MPB is 33, find the measure of LPB, MUB, LUB, and PMB. So we've got to find the measure of all of those different angles. Well, to begin with, I'm going to start just by drawing my rhombus and um, labeling the vertex point. So here's what that would look like. I've got it labeled uh, correctly, something like that. It doesn't have to look exactly like that, but something along those lines. And now I'm going to draw in my symmetry diagonals. And then I've also labeled my intersection point as B and my um, angle MPB as 33 degrees. Now I know this is a rhombus, so all four of these sides are equal in length. Okay. Now, if let's start seeing if we can find some of these angles. If this is 33 degrees, then LPB must also be 33 degrees. So I'm going to put a 33 for that one. Now, if you look at this, this triangle right here, this is an isosceles triangle. Therefore, if this is 33, that would be a base angle with this one right here. Therefore, that would also be 33 degrees, so MUB would be 33 degrees. Now we have the last two, LUB. LUB, well, that's the same as this one right here, so that would have to be 33 degrees. And finally, PMB. PMB, that's this angle right here. Well, to find that angle, I know this one is 90 degrees and this one is 33 degrees. So if I take 100, I know that if I look at the smaller triangle here, right here, 33 plus the angle I'm looking for plus 90 has to equal 180. So these three angles together have to equal 180. So if I take 180 minus 90 minus 33, that gives me 57 degrees. Therefore, this angle here must be 57 degrees. Okay, finally I'd like to take a look at this proof that we have here, example three. It says, prove that if a quadrilateral is a rhombus, then it is a parallelogram. Okay, so if we look at the proof, we're given that RHOM is a rhombus, prove that RHOM is a parallelogram. Okay, and all we really need to do is justify each of these statements. So RO and HM are symmetry diagonals of a of RHOM. So the rhombus diagonal theorem uh, tells us that that's true. So that would be our justification. So if I know those are the symmetry diagonals, well then I know that angles 1 and 2 have to be equal to each other because when I reflect that over that line, it's going to reflect onto itself. So angle 1 would reflect onto angle 2. So when we do that, the, um, the symmetric figures theorem tells us that those those uh, those angles have to be the same. I can also say that 2 and 4 would be congruent to each other because if I reflect the figure R over RO, 
um, two would reflect on to r r two would reflect onto four. So I could also use the symmetric figures theorem to, to prove that one as well. And then I can use the the uh, transitive property to say that one and four are congruent and two and three are congruent. Okay. Well, that's enough information for me then to use the um, um, alternate interior angles to say that um, those lines would be parallel because because if one and if one and four are congruent, those would be alternate interior angles, and so would two and three. So that allows me to say that those two pair of sides would have to be parallel to each other. And now I have exactly what I need, and and that is I have two pair of parallel sides, which is exactly what we need to say that 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 rhombus is a parallelogram. So now we've proved. If you look at your quadrilateral hierarchy, where we had that dotted line going between. Uh, the parallelogram and the rhombus. With this proof now, we've proved that every rhombus is a parallelogram, and we can make that a solid line. <laughs>